Are you looking for the best hunting app for your iPhone? Today I'm going to walk you through the Gaia GPS app and it'll allow you to ditch your old traditional GPS and start using your iPhone instead. If you like everything outdoors, whether it's fishing, hunting, skiing, snowboarding, hiking, and backpacking, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell so you'll be notified of future videos, and join us in Crook County as we live our life outside. Alright, let's get to it. So first we click on the Gaia GPS app in our phone and it loads. What you're looking at here is the default map that you'll get if you have the standard membership. It is a Gaia topo map. It is a pretty decent map. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all the different features of the actual front screen and briefly describe how to use each one of these. On the very top panel, you're going to see five different options. First thing we're going to do is look at the search function. We tap on the search function. In this place, you can search for parks, trails, and addresses. Click back in the screen to return. The next one is the expand view. This will expand and actually get rid of your top menu to give you a little more screen real estate while you're actually using your map. To return, click on the button beneath the record button and you return back. The third option from the left is your center point. This will center the map on your current location. The next button is the plus sign, which allows you to do different things like record a track, add waypoints, create routes, areas, download maps, we'll get to that in a separate video, and take pictures. And we'll get to that in a separate video as well. And the last one on the right is your layers panel. And your layers panel is going to determine what maps are actually being viewed at any time. To switch maps, you simply just click on the map you want to look at. The, the map layer that I use the most is the USGS Topo map. I believe it's, I think it's the most accurate. To select that as your current view, the, click on the button. And you see that the USGS Topo is now your visible map. Click on the done button and now you're there. The next set of menus is completely optimizable. You can com optimize this any way you want. I choose to have a record button. I choose to have the camera function. I like to look at the altitude. And then for obvious reasons, sunrise and sunset are important to me because I need to know when I can actually go shoot. Now you guys have to set up your GPS's any way you want, but I set the mine up this way. So when I want to record a track, I can hop out of the truck, open up my GPS, push the record button, and it starts recording a track. And then everything else is taken care of. The camera button we're gonna get into on a separate video. The next field is altitude that I choose to have and sunrise and sunset. To change these fields and to customize it, you simply click on the field and you can see you can change it to whatever you think is the best for you. So this is completely customizable to whatever you like. On the bottom, you have four different menus. You have a map menu, a trip menu, a saved folder, and a settings menu. The map button on the far left just simply returns you to the map. It's kind of like your home button. Your trip will take you on your current trip. You can see that we are recording a track right now because I did push the record button. When you start actually getting data, you'll see speed profile, altitude profiles, ascent, descent, your, and all the other things associated with a track. To return back to the map, you select the map menu in the left-hand corner and it returns you back to your map. So the next one is your save folder. Your save folder is going to provide you access to all your different waypoints and tracks. You can select specific waypoints. I have a, I have a naming convention I'll go over in another video to make things easier to actually utilize this and once you get a ton of data and to be able to organize your data so you can use it out in the field. The next is your settings where you can set up your appearance, your map controls, your map downloads. We'll get into that. That'll be a separate video by itself on how to download maps. Distance markers and notifications, your compass settings, your power savings, storage, and other. So that is an overview. And so the real most basic thing you want to do with any GPS is to mark a location. The truck's here. Couldn't get any easier with the Gaia app. So right now we're at my house. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark a waypoint where my home is. Select the plus button in the upper right hand corner, the second icon from the right. You see that there's actually two different waypoint options. You can either add a waypoint or add a waypoint my location. So if you want to mark it at your location, it's intuitively obvious. You're going to tap on add waypoint my location. 
It's going to bring up a GPS and you say, I park my truck here. You can customize appearance. You can tap to choose different icons. This is my house. Click the save button. You have your waypoint actually marked. The other option is, is let's say you're hunting and you say, I want to check out a specific draw. To be able to drop a waypoint anywhere on the map, you select the first option, add waypoint. And then you can simply drag, click and drag and say, I really want to check out this draw right here with this crick going through it. And I want to look at it from the, the top. So I'm going to try to get up here. I want to be able to peer down into there so I can actually navigate my way to there. I want to know how far that is. So I can select it. I hit save and guide. I'll just save it for what it is. And it's created a route directly to there. I know that that point is 1.8 miles away. And then I can start hiking up there and do my thing. All right, if I want to delete this route, I just simply click the X button next to the information of that route. It goes away, and we're good to go. Now that I have a waypoint added, these kind of waypoints I call them temporary, and so I actually just delete them. To delete a waypoint, you click on the waypoint, hit the I button next to it, and it'll bring up the actual waypoint. On the upper right-hand corner, you'll see three little dots. Click on that and delete. It's going to ask you, are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. So you can see that I switch over to the satellite view and this is what this is really what's cool and what I use actually in the field as much as I use the topo map. I will sw I will toggle back and forth between the two because I can actually look at the contour of the land and say, you know what, I think there's going to be a bedding area in this area or that area. And this is where I'll be like, okay, you know, I really need to go check this out. With the premium membership, you, you can you can actually look at multiple layers. So now that I have my satellite with labels and I, let's say I want to know what is actually public land. I can add that to my layers. You can set the transparency of that particular layer so you can see both layers on the map together. And so now when I'm looking at this, there's you see two different colors, green and red. Green is your public land and red is BLM land. So I know that that area right there is a legal place for me to hunt because it is in a shaded red area. Obviously, I can't walk all the way through there because I'd be trespassing through a bunch of people's properties. So now that we have a waypoint set and we know that it is on land that is huntable, BLM land, you'll see that the my location, the little orange arrow, is pointing to the left. That arrow points the, to the same direction as you're pointing your phone. So you'll see now that I have it flat, I'm going to start turning my phone and you'll start seeing the arrow turn with it. And as I'm turning it, you can see the compass move above. This is what's really cool. So now, now that you're actually set up to where your arrow is pointing directly towards your waypoint, the direction you want to travel, you simply walk in the direction your phone is pointing to. And so I need to walk that way through the kitchen and out the back door and climb straight up the mountains to get to this specific location. So now at any time, and this is where using the satellite view is so great. So now that I know my waypoints over there, well, I really want to go walk up those mountains over there. I want to walk that whole ridge line up. So now I know exactly which way I got to walk. It could be pitch black. I point my phone in the direction I want to go, and I start walking in that direction. Typically what I do is I'll look at my phone. I'll find a tree that it's pointing at, you know, two, 300 yards, and I'll walk towards it. Like I said, the most important thing and the hardest thing for like my, my family to wrap their head around was is what, what I don't understand the arrow is not pointing at what I want it to the front of your phone is the tip of that arrow bing I'm walking towards my waypoint now I want to go to the road the road's that way I need to walk that way now you'll also see the menu panel has been replaced with a navigational pane that navigational pane tells you the actual bearing 10 degrees north so if you just if you turn your compass to 10 degree north Boom, you're pointing in the direction. It tells you 1.8 miles, and then it calculates how long it would take you to walk there at your current speed. Currently, since I'm not moving, it's gonna take me a long time. All right, so there's an introduction to the Gaia GPS app. There is a link below if you wanna download this app. It is a free app. In our next video, we're gonna show exactly how to use it without actually having a cell phone signal. So until next time, I'll see you in the outdoors.